Hey guys, Cloud Wolf here, and today we are gonna have a very quick video, and I would normally show you exactly what the end product is at the very beginning of this video, but it's so quick I'm not even gonna bother. Um, but let's just get right into it. So today we are going to cover how to do timers using data packs, and this will help you also go over just how to start a new data pack, how, where do you get started? So of course, the best place to start, and that's just me being biased, is with the starter pack. So. I'm just gonna come here, but there's a link in the description to this. And I always kind of change it, add a little few things to it, tweak it. I'm gonna be making a video on it once I'm like, this is a good starter pack. But for now, I've just been using this pack myself and in descriptions for ease. So I put the zip here and then let me delete this so it doesn't have any issues. Extract here. And now that it's extracted, I have the starter pack. Then I just copy and paste it because I don't want to overwrite the original and then have this new thing. So let's call it uh, timers tutorial because this is a separate data pack just for this video. So in the data pack, you're gonna wanna get rid of anything that you don't want. So there's a few important things and that is your load and tick function. Load and tick are things that happen. Load is something that happens when the game starts. Tick is something that happens repetitively and you can pick what functions play at the beginning and what happened repetitively. Loot tables aren't gonna be important for this pack so I'm deleting it right now. Now, instead of calling it starter, I'm gonna call it my own thing. So let's call this timers. Then inside timers, we're going to have functions and here's some functions. So we don't really need a load. Let's do a load of, da, 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 da. let's go with um, timers in it. But tick, I don't think tick is actually, I don't think tick is actually necessary. So let's get rid of it for now. Cause I'm only keeping what I need, but you don't need to delete it. It's not that bad. We don't really need main. We're gonna go with some simple timers. So let's do some timers. So in the init function, you wanna create any scoreboards that even if you do them in the game, you wanna keep them there. So if I do scoreboard objectives add timer one dummy, I want to copy that and put it in here just to have it, just in case all my scoreboards get deleted. I don't have to like figure out what scoreboards there are. It's just a safe place to keep all your scoreboards just in the init function. So in case one is somehow not created, it'll create it for it. So that's timer one and we'll just create it. So timer one, let's do a new function. So we copy init, paste it, and let's call this timer one. So timer one is pretty cool. You're gonna want, uh, for each timer, you're gonna have probably two function files. So you have timer one start, and timer one. Timer one starts, starts the timer. Timer one is the timer. So in the timer, we can use schedule to get perfect timing. So we can do, we're gonna do a couple things. So this timer is for generic time. So um, everybody in, like it's only, it's not player specific. It's just all time. Player specific, you're gonna wanna do the traditional repeating uh, function. So the main function, and then you set player score to something, remove it if they have it, and just like how you would do in 1.9. But this is for a general timers, okay? Which is why I call it timer, not player counting down number. So here we're going to do, in the timer, we're going to do some things. So we're gonna go, actually let's change it from timer one to just all timers, because this is all generic anyway. Remove timer one, scoreboard this add timer dummy. So now all timers, okay? So timer one, it will keep it just in case. Okay, so in timer one, start. What do we do at the beginning? So we're gonna do scoreboard, players set. We're gonna make this timer a second timer. So it counts every second. So seconds, and it'll count down from whatever number. So let's just say 60 seconds. So seconds, timer, 60. So you're setting a fake player called seconds timer score to 60. Then you're going to play the function called timers colon timer one. So this will just initiate this timer scoreboard. So the timer scoreboard is gonna do some looping. You're gonna do scoreboard players remove seconds timer one. So this will remove one second. Let's change this to uh, five seconds to save time. Um, so this removes one from the time. Then you're gonna do some uh, conditionals. So execute if score seconds, so if the score of seconds on the timer score matches zero, uh, matches zero, then we are going to say timer done. You can make this play a function here instead of just the say command, but this is just for demonstration. 
So if it is at zero, then say timer done. Execute if score seconds timer matches one with two dots. Two dots means greater than, so one bigger than zero. If you put two dots on the other side, then that means less than one. Just convention for you guys. Then if it's bigger than one, so meaning it's not zero, you could do unless zero. I'm just doing it this way. So then we are going to schedule this function. Schedule a function, and the function we're scheduling is timers timer one to play one second later. So this will play it one second later. So if we type reload, then we can test the function. So the functions, and uh, these are from other things. Where's timers? Okay, timers, then timer one start. <sighs> timer one start. So scoreboard objectives, set the play sidebar, timers. And you can see, timer done. <laughs> it already said timer done. Okay, cool. So let's do that again. One, two, three, oh, a little bit fast. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up. Set display sidebar timers. So that's scoreboard players set seconds timers zero. Oh, this. I put an S here. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's what, this is where it is. This is where it's happening. Okay. Now we can see the time. Five, four, three, two, one. So you're probably going to want to, to make it perfect, you probably want to do this bad boy first right there so that it the five is actually five seconds because that was only four seconds um, so because when you play it it initially subtracts one from the time immediately so that is going to be more accurate four three two one so that's one second timers and that's it that's all you do so in here you can make it play a function that does something keep in mind that since you're using schedule it doesn't know who's playing the function so you can't say execute as at s because there is no at s it doesn't know who played this function. It's the server playing the function because that's what schedule does. It doesn't let you keep who did it. Now, if you wanted to make another timer, you would just copy these files, rename it to two and two. And if you wanted to make the timers different, you can make this 10, you can make this ticks, you can make this say timer two. You can make this say timer two. You can make this one tick. You can make this guy say ticks. This guy say ticks. And this guy say ticks. So you can mess with how much time things take. You could also do days rather than seconds. So now if I go timers, timer two start, tick will count down very fast. Uh, this needs to say ticks as well. So now it will tick down very, very fast. Half a second. Uh, or maybe I put that in the wrong place. Here it is. But yeah, so you guys get the point. Pretty simple to make timers. Just wanted to make a separate video and maybe help you guys see how I make starter packs. Uh, if you're wondering how I, what, what's going on when I fly through walls, it's a no clipping system I added and I'll make a video on it soon maybe. Um, it's part of some another one of my Mapmakers toolkits. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.